Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for your time and attention this morning and our uh, webinar regarding the new Salto hardware uh, for access control. My name's Steve Blake. I'm the solutions consultant for AIT on both access control and ID systems, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to cover some of the stuff today that's new into the Salto range. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping to start with. Um, firstly, uh, if people can't hear me, hopefully they'll be able to see this screen. If for any reason you can't hear me, um, please use the question panel to the side and uh, let me know. Um, if you have any questions or any feedback that you'd like to pass me during the webinar, then again, please feel free to use that question panel. Um, I'll confirm at the end of each slide if there is any questions. Uh, and obviously, if you've got anything that arises from the webinar, we can speak afterwards, um, either using the info at AIT.co.uk, uh, or you can always give us a call on 0113-273-0300. The webinar is being recorded, so you'll be able to watch it back later if you so wish. And there will be a survey sent out afterwards, including the link. Um, truthfully, uh, there's only three questions in that survey, so we would very much appreciate it if you can uh, answer those questions for us. Uh, hopefully make us more relevant for yourselves uh, for any future webinars. So um, what I'd like to cover today is very briefly cover the new space software, which is the new standard of software um, for the Salto access control. Uh, then we'll look at the new hardware itself, which is the control units and auxiliaries, the new wireless gateway and nodes. Uh, those are the bits that work with the Wi-Fi e-handles, if you're interested in those. Uh, a lovely new feature that I like very much is, is the Bluetooth low energy option. Uh, and then the new readers and uh, mini escutcheons that are available only with the space platform and the new standard of controllers. I uh, will have a brief summary and then I'll cover any questions at the end, uh, set aside time to do that as well. So firstly, the space software, uh, as I say, this is the, the, the new standard. Uh, it was introduced by Salto uh, middle of last year. Um, it's a little different. Um, uh, one of the things that's the same is that you still have a single entity license and that license is yours in perpetuity. Uh, so regardless of how many users you have, how many seats, how many properties, uh, you only need to purchase one license. Uh, there is no time limit on the license, although you do need to maintain service and maintenance for updates and such like. Uh, what I mean by perpetuity is that uh, it won't stop working after a 12 month period or anything like that. Uh, Salto are very clear, uh, they're not there to sell software to people, it is access control is what they're about. So the new space software is web based. Um, that means that you don't need to install it onto a number of different PCs, laptops, uh, etc, etc. And it can be managed from uh, all sorts of different workstations with no risk of the database being corrupted. So as I say, if you've got that one license, but you've got properties in Exeter, Norwich, Glasgow, um, people at all of those different uh, sites can use the system at the same time without there being any crossover corruption. Uh, it's a much more user friendly appearance um, than, than the old RW software was. Um, it's very much tile based, uh, looks like sort of Windows 8, Windows 10, um, and then drop down menus. So with very little training, it, it becomes intuitive. It's like so many of the other programs that we all use all the time. Um, the space software is what allows the new hardware to be used um, and makes the most of all of the capabilities of that hardware itself. Uh, but it's important to note that any existing hardware, if you're already running Salto Access Control, any of your existing hardware will remain entirely compatible with the space software as well. So it's not a case of having to change everything out when you move from the existing over to the space software. So the control units and the auxiliaries, and it's the auxiliaries that are, that are quite different. Um, 
the new control unit, uh, CU42EO, I'm, I'm sure you'll all be bearing that one in mind, I'm writing it down. Um, it's the standard control unit now under the new space software. You get one IP address and it's that control unit that's connected via Ethernet back to your server to give you live online reporting control, etc., etc. On the control unit, there are two reader inputs, and that means that you can either have a single access point with a reader on both sides, so a door whereby people present their card or their token to get in or to get out, or if you have uh, readers only on the outside, then obviously you can control two doors. And we, we have a number of clients that do exactly that, uh, whereby exit is either through a sensor or through a push button. Uh, but entry, obviously, they want to control who comes into their premises, so they need the readers only on the outside. And that means that because you've got the two inputs, you can control two doors or access points in that way. What the new control unit allows is to daisy chain up to four auxiliary controllers. And I'll put the number in, the CU4200s. Um, again, each of those auxiliary controllers also has two inputs. So by its logical extension, one control unit can actually look after up to 10 access points. What that means is that from, uh, from your point of view, firstly, it's quicker, easier and cheaper than it was with the old system where a controller was needed on every access point. Um, but also from an IT point of view, uh, it takes less bandwidth to control those 10 access points than it did originally when you needed each individual control unit um, connected into the server itself. Now, again, what's similar is that the uh, circuits themselves can be either normally open or normally closed. And that means that we can control all kinds of different access points. So the truth of the matter is if you have a maglock door, you would have a normally closed circuit so that there's power going to the magnet holding the door closed. When somebody presents a card or token, then it would um, stop that uh, current going through so that it would go to, op and, um, uh, to open uh, so the magnet releases and the door will open. With an automatic door or a turnstile or a car park barrier, it will generally be the other way around so that the signal is actually powering something up, obviously a door to open, a turnstile to move, or a car park barrier to lift, rather than depowering to allow it to move. And it's just to give you an indicator of the type of different access points that can be controlled through this uh, same controller. In a similar way, the new standard of wireless gateway can be used as different levels. So the gateway in itself um, is the Wi-Fi hub, which is connected back direct to the server. The wireless gateways allow for the e-handles um, or the escutcheons, to use their correct term, uh, to give you immediate reporting. So you get an immediate audit trail. Uh, you would get immediate warnings back to the system if somebody had tried to force the door if the door had been left open beyond its limited time, which is something that you can set within the software. Um, and it also allows for a lockdown signal to be sent in the same way as an online door. So it turns uh, the e-handle doors into a semi-online. It gives you, you know, much more immediate control and warning than you would with the standard virtual network where the card carries that data back and the next time the card is used at an online reader, that's when it's reported back to the server. The wireless gateways allow that to be done immediately. So the gateway itself is, as I say, Ethernet connected. The new gateways are PoE, um, power over Ethernet capable. So you don't have to have a separate um, power cable, um, separate fuse spur or anything to the gateway. It's PoE. Um, and within the gateway, you have one internal node, as they call it, um, and you can then add up to six external nodes. Now, the external node is almost like a repeater. Um, so it, it's a small connected uh, Wi-Fi 
in exactly the same way as the original gateways used to be. But because each one of these can control up to 16 handles or locks, in total, you could look after 112 Wi-Fi handles from that single point uh, gateway being connected back to the server. So much in the same way as the controllers and the auxiliaries, it's much quicker and easier to install, so there's less disruption for yourselves. And again, because they're less capable in total, the nodes themselves are cheaper to purchase than the gateway. So it's a much more cost effective way than, than the old system was when you had to have an individual gateway um, for every sort of 12 locks as it was at that point. So an, another step forward, both from an install and a control point of view, again, less bandwidth being used for that number of doors to be controlled. Now, the, the next thing, that I, I think this is fabulous, the, the, the Bluetooth low energy. Um, for, for many years now, people have been talking about using NFC, near-field communication, with their telephones. Um, and the truth is it's not moving forward anything like as quickly as it should, um, mostly because there's still arguments going on between the phone providers, the access control providers, the chip providers, as to who should pay for the infrastructure as opposed to who should get any income back from the systems. So uh, what Salto have done is moved to use the Bluetooth low energy, um, the BLE, which is used on headsets and, and car kits, et cetera, et cetera, from your phones, and uh, put a, a wire into the new style readers as an option so that people can then use their telephones. So what you require for this is the what's called the HAMS version of the software of space and the optional just-in module. Um, now, these were developed really for the hospitality industry and hotels and such like, whereby somebody could check in online, uh, download an app to their telephone and use their phone to get into their room in a hotel. But because of the uh, overall usage of telephones and, and how predominant they're becoming in everybody's lives these days, um, they, that's now being used a lot more in the corporate and very especially in the education sector. Um, there's very few teenagers these days that will go anywhere without their telephones. Um, so it, it's starting to grow massively in those particular areas. So you do, as I say, you need the new style controllers and the new readers and they have to be specified with the BLE option because it's a separate aerial that sits within the reader. You then, when you're putting a user into the system itself, add their telephone details, and then the user downloads the free app onto their telephone. Now, the app's available in both Android and iOS for Apple, um, and the phones need to be BLE capable. But truthfully, um, pretty much any phone from the last four years is BLE, um, Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, I think the standard starts at the Apple iPhone 4, and it's the Galaxy S3. Um, anything newer than those two, they don't have to just be um, iPhones or Galaxies, but anything newer than those two has the BLE capability. Um, unfortunately, for those people that use Windows telephones, that's not available at the moment, um, but uh, it, it's a very small part of the market there. What that means is that the telephone itself becomes an additional token for the user in the same way that an ID card or a FOB can be. Um, so all they need to do when they walk up to the door is present their phone, press the button, it sends the information over BLE, they're accepted and allowed through the door or not. Uh, this really excites me. I, <laughs> I absolutely love the way that this works. Uh, and I can see this being a, a massive leap forward, uh, especially, as I say, in the education sector. So as I've mentioned the new wall readers. Um, for those of you that have the Salto system already, you can see that they're completely different in appearance. It's a much more modern appearance uh, than the old readers. Um, it's got a, a lovely curved look. Um, it's slightly conical uh, as far as its shape is concerned. And it's a much more obvious and clear LED um, light all the way around the top edge of the reader itself. So when you present your token, whether it be a, a mobile phone or whether it be the old fashioned um, ID card or FOB or whatever it is that you're using as your token, you will get an immediate either green or red light 
as well as a beeping an acoustic indicator um, to say whether somebody is allowed in or not it's completely concealed in its fixing and really importantly because of the way that it's manufactured it's certified to IP66 what that means is that as it stands the standard wall reader is um, completely applicable for outdoor use in and what they classify as rough weather so the old systems you you if you have them if you've got any outside you might have the weather cowl all the way around it it's no longer needed so if you do move over all of your readers internally and externally will look the same people will be looking for the same thing to use uh, and it's very obvious it keeps that design aspect with you all the way through uh, you'll also notice on the uh, white reader um, down towards the bottom um, there is actually a little uh, sign sorry a little sign there on that reader um, and that's to show that that one does actually work with the BLE now as well as those standard readers there's a, a new standard of pin pad reader uh, and you can see with that one you've got the same sort of overall look but the pin pad is now on the front of the reader itself and it uses the same internal LED uh, in order to illuminate the numbers uh, to put your pin number in in the first instance. So again, you've got the same thing with the LED green and red lights, same concealed fixings for security and it is still IP66 certified. But you've got a couple of options now with the um, pin readers. So you can have them as either card only. So someone presents their card or their token and the door opens, lets them through. You can have pin only. Obviously, as it says, you put your pin number in and you can get through. Or you can have card and pin. That What's classified as two-factor authentication. Um, so something two-factor authentication is simply something that you have and something that you know. So you have to have your token with you, your ID card maybe, and you have to know your own PIN number. And it's only when both of those things are presented that the door will open. It gives that added layer of security there. And within that, you can have those as timed options. So it may be that you say during office hours, um, we've got a receptionist by the door, we've got security officers, whatever it may be. During those office hours, we're happy that you just present your card and come in. Outside of office hours, in order to ensure that someone in the street hasn't picked up a card and decided to make use of it, um, then you can say, right, after 5.30, 6 o'clock, before 8 o'clock in the morning, we want somebody to produce their card and their PIN number. So, again, it's just that added little level of security there. Now, the PIN reader is available as a double height. So if you wanted to migrate over to the new standard um, and you wanted the new readers through, um, but you've got an existing style uh, reader with the pin pad beneath it, um, the double height one has the same footprint. So you can maintain the appearance all the way around the building with all the advantages of the new standard. Um, so as I say, it is available as a double height. If it's a completely new uh, install, then I, I think the, uh, the standard ones that match the normal readers look absolutely fantastic. The last new um, piece of hardware is the, the Mini Escutcheon, um, which is effectively a smaller version of the e-handles. Um, uh, they act in exactly the same way. And again, you can see immediately that you've got a very similar appearance that carries through from the new wall readers themselves. Um, so a design match, the black or, or the white uh, actual housing itself, a similar look on that uh, light to tell you whether somebody's allowed access or not. Um, and although all of these show that the handle is mounted to the right hand side, they are reversible so they can be mounted either way. Um, the, uh, the, the mini escutcheons, they work with any of the Euro DIN locks. Um, and if you don't have those, but this would be the most applicable solution for you, there are mortises available to retrofit so that these can still be fitted to existing doors. Uh, you can see in the bottom picture with the white one again, it's got the BLE option on it, uh, and that's above uh, a key. So again, people sometimes want to use uh, a physical locking mortise, uh, and that can be accommodated as well. There's no problem with that. 
As with the other e-handles, there are a number of timed options. So you can set specific parameters when options are available. Um, some people use what's called the office mode. Uh, if you have a meeting room, for instance, or it's used a lot in the education sector for um, lecture theatres and, and classrooms and such like. And what office mode does is that when the first person who is authorised comes to the door, they open the door using their token, their card. They then hold the inside handle down whilst presenting their card. And that puts the door into office mode, which means anyone can then open that door uh, without having to present a card. So as I say, meeting rooms, lecture theatres, once the first person's entered, the door is then free to use for anybody coming in thereafter. And to turn the office mode off afterwards, it's just a reversal of the same thing. Hold the handle down, present the card to it, and that will switch office mode off. It's something that can be timed. So again, you can say this is only available during these hours. Um, you know, maybe nine till five again. Uh, it might be that you have the doors on free open all the time during nine to five, but you want to then give office mode and such like after five o'clock until nine o'clock at night. Uh, maybe if you've got uh, night schools, those sort of things are occurring. So all round, you can see there's it's a much cleaner appearance for the wall readers, for the escutcheons, but you've also got that huge leap forward on both the online doors with the controllers and the auxiliaries and the e-handles that operate with the, uh, the wireless, the Wi-Fi handles. So you've got the space software. Um, which obviously is uh, the web-based. Um, it's much more intuitive and user-friendly than the old system was. You've got the, um, the new standard of controllers, CU42EO, which allows the auxiliary controller. And that means that that single controller reporting back to the server can give you up to 10 access points. Much easier, slightly cheaper to actually fit in the first instance, less disruption for your cells when it's being installed, and then less bandwidth being taken up whilst it's actually being used. The same is so for the new G2 gateways, um, so that you get that instant audit and warnings from e-handles. Um, but the ability to use separate nodes means that, again, that single point reporting back to the server can give you control of up to 112 e-handle doors the new BLE option the bit I absolutely love it I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm maybe a little bit sad but I really do love, love this BLE option um, uh, and that means that with the optional module that that hands and just in module within the space software it's a free app onto the telephone and that makes everybody's mobile phone an additional token for them to use to get access to the various different um, areas that they're authorized to get to you've then got the new readers um, the XS4 2.0 readers with that beautiful, clean, modern design. Um, uh, I think it, it, it's a really good look. Uh, the pin option and the fact that they're weatherproof now means that you don't need that additional cowl, that any readers outside can be set to look exactly the same as the readers inside so that people um, around the premises recognize exactly what's the reader and they're not looking for something different inside to outside. Uh, and the ability to use the XS4 mini handles have got the matching design to those new readers. The fact that it's an easy retrofit, anything with a Euro DIN latch, it will fit to very, very simply. Uh, makes it a, a, a very quick, easy alternative to lock and key on internal doors, still maintaining your access control levels uh, and the timed options. So. I hope you can see that everything there, uh, it, it's, you know, inspired access is Salto's uh, logo. Um, and it's the fact that they keep moving these things forward um, uh, is really holding them at the forefront. Uh, it, it's, it's fantastic stuff as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and um, uh, this, this just moves it even further forward as far as I can see. So it only remains to say thank you very much for your time today. Um, uh, I have time for some questions and answers now, uh, and I will remain on the line. As I said before, the webinar has been recorded, uh, and uh, we'll send you through the link for that if you wish to go through and see anything more. Obviously, we've given an overview here, 
So for more details, um, if you'd like us to come along and, and survey your site, see what's applicable to yourselves uh, and give you the best possible options, then always feel free to send us an email through at solutions at AIT.co.uk um, or give us a call on 0113-273-0300. Um, so I've got a couple of questions here. Um, the the first question, uh, will I still be able to control the existing doors? Yes. Um, the, uh, the space software, if you upgrade to space from an existing uh, RW uh, software system, um, or space will still control all of the um, previous standard of controllers uh, and e-handles and such like. Uh, so there's there's certainly no problem with that. And uh, right, so I've got a question here. So the new controller. Um, How does it compare with the one you use currently? Do you no longer need a controller per online door? Okay, so you don't need a specifically um, the controller itself uh, because you could use the auxiliary controllers. And it's the fact that it's the two separate standards. So each actual online controller will operate, as I say, with up to four of the auxiliaries and each uh, controller or auxiliary has two uh, relays which can control either one access point that's read in and read out or two access points that only require a read in one direction. Um, so if you've got a, a door with a reader on the inside and the outside, you would need either a controller or an auxiliary for that. Um, whereas if you had, say, a car park with an in entry barrier and an exit barrier, um, you could have one controller looking after both of those barriers. But as I say, it wouldn't necessarily need to be a controller that was connected back through to the server. You could have the auxiliary actually looking after the car park barriers, um, uh, another auxiliary looking after the, a turnstile uh, through a security fence for such like, uh, and then the actual controller itself that's connected to the server could be uh, above an automatic door. Uh, so you've got one actual controller reporting back to the server, that's your main controller, uh, and then the auxiliaries actually looking after the individual access points. Um, yeah. Can I get the new wall readers to replace the current one? Yes, um, you, you can replace the, the current standard of wall readers with those new ones. Um, and I understand it, uh, what, what you'd like to. So it, it, they're much nicer looking, I think. Um, the only thing that you need to be aware of with that is that you would need to upgrade your software to the space software and the new standard of controllers. Um, because of the way they work, because of the IP66 rating, it is the new standard uh, that's required as far as the controller and um, those new controllers have to have the space software to look after but again as I say um, Salto are very clear they're not um, software salespeople they're access control company uh, and therefore the, there's really very little impediment if you want to upgrade uh, we can take you all the way through that process um, uh, so that there's no problem with that um, okay will space Right. OK, so so um, will space still integrate with the card exchange? Um, yes, it will. Um, one of the things that, that we specialize in is integrating uh, all of your systems so that it's very seamless uh, in exactly the same way as RW works. It's a slight move forward, but space also works with an SQL database in the background. Um, so that means that we can still take information from Active Directory if you're using it. Um, any form of um, uh, business uh, information systems, um, student information systems, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, and therefore work through your card exchange program onto a card printer. So, in exactly the same way as it does with the RW software, Space will still work that you can input your new users' details into just the, the card exchange program. That will then go back via the SQL 
take somebody's access rights and you can print and encode the ID card all in one so that someone gets their new card, uh, obviously with all of their details on and already set up to work correctly for where they're allowed access to and where they're not. Um, okay, what do I need to Okay, right, so um, <laughs> so I've just been asked what I need to do to upgrade the current system to space to use the BLE. Okay, so firstly, you're absolutely right, you do need space uh, and the new standard of controllers and readers to use that BLE option. Um, it, it's very simple, really. Uh, as I say, we're, we're here in order to help through that journey. Um, it's uh, dependent upon the version of RW software that you have and the version of space software that you want to move to. Um, it, it, there's either little or no cost for the software itself. Um, and as I just mentioned, because you're still working with an SQL database, um, what we need to be absolutely certain of is that everything on your background database moves over seamlessly. Um, so we can certainly assist with that. Um, and it, it's a relatively simple job, but it's something that we like to do in a trial area first just to ensure that everything moves from the old sql to the new sql so those databases are exactly the same um, and it means everybody's access rights stay exactly the same uh, you can if you already have as i say a business information system something that holds the details of the user's telephones already then that can come over as a new field into the new database so uh, you'd need the add-on for the hams uh, and the justin uh, but as i say they're uh, absolutely tiny uh, as far as uh, economic outlay is concerned uh, if you were moving over from uh, say uh, the, the departmental version of the rw software into uh, what's now called the partition versions uh, space partition uh, to achieve exactly the same uh, overall setup that in itself um, is actually a cost-free upgrade as far as the software is concerned it's just a little bit of time and integration work that's required in order to achieve that um, but then as i say you would need those two additional modules you'd need the hams and you would need the uh, the just in but it, it's very simple to achieve Okay, um, so that's, uh, that, that's all of the questions that I have at the moment. I will remain on the line um, for, for the next 10 minutes or so in case anybody has any other questions. Uh, but if you don't, uh, as I say, thank you very much for your time and attention today. Uh, uh, you will be getting through that survey, so please just fill out the, the quick three uh, questions. If you want to uh, see this webinar or any of our previous webinars, then please feel free to go to www ait.co.uk and you can then uh, click through to our YouTube uh, channel uh, and see uh, all of our previous webinars and some of the presentations that are on there uh, and as I said before obviously if there's anything that we can help you with email us at solutions at or give us a call in the office on 0113 273 0300 thank you very much for your time